Okay, so today we're going to talk about Flash. Um, I've had quite a few um, emails and comments on YouTube videos and so on um, asking, uh, do I use Flash uh, during my weddings? And the answer is yes. And if so, how do I get um, good looking photos? Um, I think a lot of people are having problems and probably have always had problems getting flash photos to not look like flash photos but still getting all the advantages of using flash. So I use flash um, at a wedding obviously if things are getting too dark, if there's no light, uh, no, no, no natural light through windows or, or anything to help make the photos interesting um, I'll use flash. There are certainly times of the day when I, when I basically have to use flash uh, first dance, for instance, normally cake cuttings quite often, evening time can be quite dark then, and various other times. Sometimes also for the group photos, I'll use off-camera flash. So I'm going to talk about on-camera flash is the first thing, and then briefly, but not too much in depth, about off-camera flash, but I will cover it. First of all, gear. So obviously I've got my Nikon, uh, on the Z6 II here, the Z5, or the D700. Um, I've, I've used so many Nikon cameras and they all pretty much work the same. I have to say the Z cameras, as far as flash goes, are probably the best I've used. The D780 was also pretty brilliant. The 750 before that was, uh, it had the odd glitch here and there. Um, it would sometimes over or underexpose, sometimes you get a really you know, completely white picture where the flash had gone berserk. Doesn't tend to happen these days um, using these guys. The flash that I use, um, I have got an old Mikey uh, flash for Nikon, for Nikon uh, which I no longer use, but I have got, I, occasionally if I need three flashes off camera, I'll use that one. But um, my main flash is the Godox V1. Uh, I've had this, goodness knows how long now, four years. Um, it's actually getting so well used, the, the, <laughs> the screen is starting to fade. Um, but I've, it still works absolutely brilliantly. The battery lasts forever. I've never got anywhere close to using all the battery during a wedding. Um, it's accurate and, most importantly, it does produce some great flash photos. But you can't use it like this. Okay, um, it comes with a range of modifiers, and uh, one of the things, one of the things that I used to use uh, before the days of this Godox, back on the the old sort of rectangular um, flashes, Nikon flashes or other people's, was this thing, um, which you can just attach to the top of the flash, um, and it will spread the light out to make the flash a lot bigger. That certainly helps, uh, and if you've got an old rectangular type um, uh, flash, then, then this rogue flash, uh, called flash bender, uh, might make things better. I found <coughs> that with this, this is one of the best ways to use this flash for photographing people who aren't too far away from you. Um, Probably this, this works fine for, I would, I would use this for small group shots um, of maybe half a dozen people who are, what are we talking, five, six metres away. Um, beyond that, then this probably isn't going to work too well. The flash won't be powerful enough to get that sort of distance unless it's almost dark, in which case you're not going to get good pictures anyway. But the domed head with this this reflector and the way I use this on the camera would be at about that sort of angle so you've got some light being reflected from the reflector here but also you've got some soft light coming from from the opaque uh, diffuser here um, and with that diffuser it, it does it does spread the light quite nicely and, and it stops that um, kind of rabbit in headlights look that some flash photos can have but we also need um, I also sorry I also use it in this configuration so the flash is pointing sideways 
just a little bit forward probably. Hope you can see that. So we're pointing you know, a little bit in the direction of the lens. Um, and that works fine. It, it gets the flash off center. And this can add a little bit of depth to the photo compared to if you shoot with it just straight on like that, the flash is in line with the lens and it, it just kind of makes the photos look flash, uh, look flat. Just using that a few inches off center does help give a little bit of direction to the flash and it obviously works that way um, as well. It lifts the flash above the level of the lens. I just find it, it, it gives nice photos. I think the main questions that I've been getting are, are to do with exposure and how do you quickly get the correct exposure when you're using flash. Let's investigate. First of all, I'm in aperture priority. I've set the auto ISO and I'm shooting at my lowest speed is 125th of a second. My exposure conversation is nothing. Now let's just talk about that because that, that's important. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this. If you go into the menus, let me just back up and hopefully you can see this. I'm not sure it's focusing. Let's hope it is. Um, go into uh, custom setting menu, acting and flash, and come down to exposure compensation for flash. Make sure you've got that on background only. Okay. What you can now do is if you use the exposure compensation dial and you just click down say one stop what this will do is it will darken the background by one stop but give you correct exposure for where the flash is going now you also really want this works best if you've got spot metering so that when you focus not only is it setting the, the whole exposure based on what you focused on, but the flash will also use that spot to determine how much flash for this particular shot. I find that works very well. Around about one stop underexposed for the whole image, for the background. When you turn the flash on, so Flash on, and I'll talk about flash in a second, um, and we are pretty much ready to go. Flash, this needs to be set. This is a really, really great flash because um, you can set it to be not only a flash on the camera, but it will also send a signal to an off-camera flash as well. And I do use that quite a lot as well. The other flash I've got, by the way, is the AD200. Um, so sometimes I'll use this flash in conjunction with that other times I'll take this flash off put it on another light stand so I'll have two off camera flashes and I'll use the Godox um, trigger what's it called? X-Pro X -Pro trigger um, again these days pretty reliable uh, you can put it on auto, um, on TTL, and, and it will, by and large, get you the right shot. Times I wouldn't use TTL and I'll set everything up manually would be for the first dance, uh, because I want that light in the distance to be a certain brightness, because that's firing towards me. TTL <laughs> really isn't going to work very well, so that needs to be a manual. The one that's behind me, and actually give me light on the bride and groom on their first dance. I might have that on TTL. I probably won't. I'll probably get one of the bridesmaids to come up, stand in the middle of the dance floor, so I can set this all up beforehand. Um, and then I know that I can just wander around with my camera and get shots from anywhere. And I've got the correct light on this side of the bride and groom. And I've probably got something that's way too bright on this side. But I can use that to get creative when I'm um, doing the first dance. So, sorry, back to that. So on, on this screen, hoping that's visible. I'm not too sure, it'll probably be too bright. But anyway, a screen where you can set this to whichever you want. You can have it manual, TTL, whatever. 
Uh, you can set the off-camera flashes to TTL, manual. You can adjust the exposure compensation or the flash power if it's manual. The other option is TTL. So either using this as a flash plus controller or just on camera flash, TTL. Um, I always shoot at 28mm zoom uh, because I'm shooting through the diffuser. Um, it just gives a bit more spread of light, I guess. Um, and that's really about it. I don't do anything else. Um, I've got no flash compensation set up. Um, if I go into my eye menu on the camera, I've got flash compensation on there. I've got it, sorry, I lie. I've actually got it at minus three. Let's put that up to zero. Um, that's it. That's just as it is. There's no compensation on that. And as I say, so the only thing that I've done is turn the background exposure down by one stop. And it's as simple as just point and shoot. Uh, point and shoot. And we have you know, correct exposure. Um, it works nine times out of ten. There are some situations where it might get a bit more difficult if you've got a heck of a lot of backlight if you're outside. Um, if it's a really bright day, you could run out of power. It might just not have enough power. And you, if if it comes, if it's continually coming out too dark on a bright sunny day, it may just be simply that it this just can't do it. Just can't give you enough flash. That's what I use for most of the time. So if I had a tricky situation, like a really bright day, then the way I would solve that would be to go to manual on the camera. Let's turn that off. So back to manual on the camera, which for me is U3. Uh, it's also black and white. That's another story. Um, <clears throat> set the ISO, take the auto ISO off and set the ISO to probably 200, 250. Um, I would set the aperture to probably 5, 5.6, something like that, uh, and the speed to a uh, 200th or 250th. I've got mine set to high speed, um, what do they call it? So, uh, I don't know. If you, can, if you go into the menu, sorry, and we go to flash, you can set the shutter speed, sync speed. It says 200 with a star. Um, auto FP, um, that's what I've got that set to. So you can go to 250th of a second if you want to. You're safest at 200th. You won't get any banding or anything then. So I've now got my camera set to manual and I'm not sure what sort of exposure I'm getting. Not enough. So I'm going to push the um, ISO up until I get some exposure. It's a little bit dark. I'm on now on ISO 2000, which might be too much. So we go down on the aperture 3.5, but now at 2000 ISO. I should just be able to still use TTL on the flash and still get a decent photo. Still correctly exposed. So using manual, if you've got a difficult situation, manual on the camera, you can still use TTL on the flash, you don't have to go to menu on the flash. I'm not sure what, what more I can say. What what I can tell you is that I've got no connection with Godox whatsoever. Believe me, I don't get any backhanders or anything. But since I got this V1 flash um, and the Godox Expo transmitters and the AD200, I wish I'm probably going back four years now. Since I got all that stuff, I've really can forget about flash, it's just no longer an issue. I do remember that before that, using, you know, the, the, the Nikon flashes, and goodness me, whose triggers did I used to use? Because you used to have a transmitter on the camera and a receiver on the flash. <clears throat> that that was hard work. And if you've still got anything like that system, it's, it's gonna be hard work, period. Um, this makes it so easy, as I say, I, I can, I can take probably 100 flash photos at a wedding, as I've just described, and 98 will be perfectly fine, perfectly, um, perfectly as far as focus goes.
and they will they will look good as well. Be careful if you go too mad on the um, making the background dark and relying on the flash for too much for too much of the lighting. You will find that this will give a, a, a flash look to the photo because it's coming from quite a small source. If you've got most of the light you need and this is just filling in a bit, giving a bit of pop to the eyes and that sort of thing, then it's perfect. If you're going to go to a setup where you want a much darker background, you need really to go to off-camera flash. Quickly talk about off-camera flash. Let's take that off. So, we simply have the trigger. And we'll turn that on. Uh, you can control one, two, three, four, five flashes from this. Um, on the flash, um, we're set up as TTL on the camera. That's not going to work. So we need to go to another setting. Um, that's the one where this is on the camera. That's flashes and it tells the off camera flash what to do. We've got another setting that one where this receives a signal and this works as an off-camera flash. Um, I've got this set to channel 21 and this is A. So if I go to A on my transmitter, I can set whether that's TTL, manual or off. So if I pop this on the flash stand, And I would, I would tend to use the same setup that I have on the camera. So I would still use this um, diffuser and the bounce card. Um, again, pointed at a round about sort of 30 degree angle, not pointing straight at your subject and not pointing right up in the air. So something like that. Um, we're on TTL. And it's okay. It's really so simple. Just point that at what you want to take a shot of. Take a shot, and we have a perfect shot. But of course, the thing you can do this time is, depending on where you have your flash, you can get a totally different look. So if we go back to that shot, you can see I've got a shadow over this side of my subject. Um, so that side of her is in. Uh, is in light. If I do it as I've got it set now, then things will look totally different. No shadows this side, shadows all over that side. I could obviously change that for an umbrella, maybe a, a little white shoot through umbrella. Let's have a go. Um, which would give me yet another totally different look. So, I haven't changed any settings at all, just popped an umbrella on, which is going to cut down the amount of light that is getting to the subject, but we're on TTL on the flash, so we really don't need to worry about that. Um, we should get a perfectly exposed image, as we have there. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what else to say. Um, if I haven't answered your questions, please do uh, get back to me. Let me know on, on in, in let me know in the comments. Um, if it's all been way too confusing and you haven't got a clue, well, again, let me know and, and I'll redo it uh, with a lot more practice and a lot more structure. But these days, it's really not too difficult. Don't overthink it. Aperture priority is fine most of the time. TTL will work brilliantly. Simply adjust the, the background exposure, not by too much, only by a stop maybe. Um, and you should get photos 95% of the time, which are brilliant. Let me know what you think. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.